Hello everyone. With this video, I'd like to focus on the COVID-19 cases going on in India. So primarily intended for my friends in India who are probably concerned about the status of coronavirus as of today. Now, there are many sources uh, for, your, for data. Of course, Google is a great way of actually getting a great snapshot of how many total confirmed cases in the world and what fraction of that is belonging to India and of that, what fraction is for uh, Maharashtra and the different states. So uh, you can get a good snapshot and I'm going to use uh, the skills that I have uh, in Python to extract relevant data to actually highlight a couple of aspects of coronavirus in India. Now, unfortunately, it's not looking good because a few weeks ago, we only saw a few cases, handful of cases, and a lot, I saw a lot of misinformation, a lot of theories online. I hope that's true, but uh, in the regular media about how maybe uh, most Indians may have uh, immunity to these type of uh, viruses because uh, uh, of malaria medication or because of higher immunity in general. Uh, but uh, I, I hope that's true, but I'm not, it's, it's not proven, I, I should say. Uh, especially when you look at how the numbers are growing, uh, you can see that, okay, this is how it got started in the United States and other uh, countries, you know, in Europe, for example, in Italy, it was very fast, but uh, India is not as fast as Italy. But let's actually have a quick look at the numbers and make some sense out of it. So for that, uh, the data set I'm going to use is downloaded from COVID-19 in India Kaggle data set. These guys do a great job updating these data set almost on a daily basis. So I downloaded this and it has a lot more information than what I'm going to talk about. It has information on how many hospital beds are there in India and uh, the testing details, the testing, you know, uh, the population at various uh, regions in India. So if you want to do further analysis, you can definitely do that in Python. For now, I'm going to use the COVID-19 India data set that actually contains information about total number of cases, deaths, and uh, uh, per state uh, recorded. So uh, first thing I, I would like to talk about is, again, do not be intimidated by the code. This is not a coding tutorial. I'll make uh, the code available in case you want to do this analysis yourself, but I'll just run snippets of code at a time so we can look at the result. So here I'm actually plotting the top 10 states with total number of cases and total number of deaths. So uh, in, in both, unfortunately, Maharashtra is leading and Gujarat and Delhi are following, you know, and uh, in terms of total number of deaths, uh, there are more deaths in Madhya Pradesh than in Delhi, and that may be attributed to availability of good healthcare facilities in that specific region compared to Madhya Pradesh. Now, uh, my relatives and I come uh, originally from Telangana, from Hyderabad, so I included, I have special focus on Telangana and Andhra Pradesh here. And Andhra Pradesh, for some reason, seems to have more deaths, and Telangana doesn't even show up in the top 10. Oh, well, actually it does, right, following uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh right here, and uh, here they're kind of flipped. Telangana has more uh, cases. Now, if you want to uh, look at how many in here, I mean, of course, you can get that from Google or even from this data set I downloaded, but let's actually dig this a bit deep by having a look at the total India cases. And this is where the real numbers start to show up, right? So as of uh, 22nd of April, and the day didn't end yet, we have 20,471 cases and 652 deaths. Now just look at a week ago, you have 10,000 cases. It's almost looking like every seven, eight days, the total number of cases is doubling. And unfortunately, the total number of deaths are also following this. You see how uh, if you go back a week again, you have like 5,000, even four days, five days. It actually, the total number of cases doubled within five, six days earlier. So it's it seems to be doubling almost every week, even with the lockdown in India. So just imagine what happens when the lockdown ends. These numbers will skyrocket. And in fact, you can see that right from this plot. Uh, the, the, the total number of cases, they're not exactly exponential. Exponential would actually go slightly this way. I'll actually simulate this in a minute and then show you how exponential looks like. But it is still rising almost uh, at an exponential rate, slightly less than exponential. So that's the first lesson. And the second lesson that we can actually get is by plotting. Let's do one more plot here. 
And by uh, picking a few states, I actually picked Maharashtra, Kerala, Karnataka, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh, and Andhra Pradesh, and I plotted this. And again, I'm plotting both the total number of cases. So here, this is the total number of cases, and Maharashtra is skyrocketing. Again, I uh, I don't know, I, I don't have my foot on the ground in Maharashtra, so you people probably know it better, but uh, uh, it's, it's not looking very good for Maharashtra. Also, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh are slightly going up, but then they're not going up at the same rate as uh, some of these other places. So maybe people in Telangana and other states are following this uh, lockdown a bit more carefully than Maharashtra. Or maybe it's just that Maharashtra, especially in Mumbai, the population density is so high, uh, one person in these high density regions you know, can contaminate a lot more people. So that's a different study altogether that you can do by looking at the population at these various regions uh, and plotting them accordingly. Now, total number of deaths also Maharashtra is leading uh, compared to Andhra Pradesh. And uh, luckily within Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, it's about 25 or so. And hopefully the, it won't go up. And uh, the final lesson I would like to again uh, convey here is by looking at the mortality rate. OK, so what percentage of people who got this virus are actually dying and this is uh, this is uh, a bit encouraging i should say uh, 3.5 still significant number but it's uh, a less number i should say so most people seem to be recovering from these and i hope it stays that way i mean initially it was about two two and a half percent but uh, but it went up to 3.5 percent and my i seriously think that the total number of cases are underestimated. I think we we know the total number of deaths in a way, you know, from coronavirus. Uh, so I don't I don't uh, question those numbers. But when you look at total number of cases, I think a lot more people actually got this than we actually know. So the testing is not readily available. So this actual mortality rate is probably not even three and a half percent. It's probably around two percent. Uh, because of this underestimation of total number of uh, total number of cases. So uh, I commented this part out because I didn't think I would be covering it, but I think it does make sense to actually look at uh, uh, plotting it. So I'm predicting using exponential fit. Again, in this case, it's not growing at an exponential rate, luckily, but uh, if it were to go up at an exponential rate, you see the green line is the exponential curve when I fit it to these points. And the blue points are the last five points. Uh, and as you can see, it's a deviating from exponential, which means the growth uh, in terms of total number of cases is not really exponential. It's uh, slightly off, which is an encouraging thing. So hopefully it will flatten out and then go back down uh, pretty soon. So uh, this is the analysis I would like to convey with this video and how it affects, you know, uh, I know uh, it's, it's a diff very difficult thing to be uh, socially isolated or stay at your own place and uh, what that means to different groups actually has different meaning for someone who earns daily wage you know to get food on their plate this can be very devastating and for some middle class family where they still get some part of some or all of their uh, income this is an inconvenience where you don't get your regular tv serials you know for rich people this is a complete different ball game because for rich people they're uh, suffering by doing their own dishes or cooking their own food right so everyone's suffering at different levels i'm not making fun of the rich people it's just that uh, uh, this this coronavirus is disproportionately affecting the poor compared to the others. And this is exactly why it's very important for us to stay at home and get get this thing done with as fast as uh, uh, we can get it done so everyone can get back to lives and put food on their tables. So I hope you found this video to be very informative and uh, also it's a bit educational because I want you to dive into Python programming. Uh, uh, it's very easy to learn and please go ahead and uh, start learning whether you are a uh, you know humanities major, communications major, it doesn't matter. Python is for everyone so please go ahead and spend your time at home constructively by learning how to code and you can start with my channel if you want. Thank you very much.